Oh baby. <laughs> Hello, I'm David Gray and this here is Bailey. You probably can't see her, but she likes to always see what's going on. And I'm bringing you another video not too long after the uh, Knobstone Trail hike remake that I did. I think I owed you that much after the really long winter and how much time I took off of putting out videos. And it is an absolutely glorious day here in uh, third week or so of April in 2023 in Indiana. The leaves are coming out on the trees. I've got some purple flowers on the red buds over there. I should be out in the woods backpacking instead of making videos, but that's gonna have to wait a little while. I do have a trip planned, or we have one coming up hopefully in mid-May. Um, I don't know where we're gonna be going. It may be Great Smoky Mountains National Park again, or probably somewhere down in that direction, but we'll get a trip in here in the next few weeks or so. Uh, this video is not a hashtag TBT throwback time remake video of one of my older hikes. This one I've never published before. It's a trip that I took down to Morgan Monroe State Forest as a training hike before Travis and I did the uh, Great Smoky Mountains National Park Mount LeConte hike in 2016. This was a day hike that I did down to what's called the Three Lakes Trail in Morgan Monroe State Forest. It's right across the street from the Tecumseh Trail or the Low Gap Trail. There are two 10 mile loops that really, one starts on one side of the road and the other starts on the other side of the road at Morgan Monroe State Forest headquarters. I've uh, never done a video of the Three Lakes Trail before because it's, uh, it's really not a backpacking trail. Backcountry camping is not allowed, so it's kind of a long day hike trail. But in this particular case, um, I did wear my pack for both days. It was kind of a training hike. The only reason it's over two days is because my battery died almost towards the trail tail end of the hike <laughs> on the first day. So that made me go back the next day when we had very similar weather conditions and finish the hike. When I did this hike back in 2016, my thought was that I was gonna do a, a, a Hiking Indiana playlist on my channel, but I never really got going on it, so I never published this video. But in going back and looking at it here recently as I'm trying to clean up some of my older projects that I've kind of let linger for a while, it's a pretty interesting video. I spent a lot of time uh, doing walkthrough shots on this, so it almost looks as if there's a separate film crew filming a bunch of it. I also had with me and used a wireless microphone that made some distance shots a little more interesting because the audio was, uh, was really good on those, even though the camera was a little bit farther away from where I was, so it made for some interesting shots there. For anyone who's interested in hiking the Three Lakes Trail, I think you're gonna get a really good idea of what it's like from watching this video. So with that, I hope you enjoy a long unpublished video from 2016 of a long day hike I did down on the Three Lakes Trail in Morgan Monroe State Forest. Hello, <laughs> I'm back again. Thought I'd take advantage of an absolutely glorious day in central Indiana in late June to uh, bring you another backpacking video. I'm on my way down to Morgan Monroe State Forest to do a, uh, my last training hike for the upcoming Smoky Mountain National Park trip and thought I would take advantage of it to do a, uh, a, a video of the Three Lakes Trail, which is one of the two big uh, loop trails down in Morgan Monroe State Forest that I uh, frequent often. Couldn't even tell you how many times I've done both of those loops with the dogs as uh, day hikes. And speaking of the dogs, I actually have uh, two furry friends along for this trip with me. You can see they're uh, extremely excited to start hiking today. But I thought I'd take advantage of being down here anyways to put together a video of the Three Lakes Trail. It's a 10.2 mile loop trail that starts just west of the Morgan Monroe State Forest. What I'm hoping to bring you with this video is a rather detailed tour of the Three Lakes Trail. So if you're ever in the area or want to come here and, and hike the trail, it should give you a pretty good idea expect when you, what to expect when you get here. Now be prepared though, I'm calling this a backpacking trip because I will be wearing my backpack. But backcountry camping is not allowed on the Three Lakes Trail. With that introduction, let's get down to the trailheads only a few miles away and uh, get hiking on an absolutely perfect day in Indiana. There's a rather obscure little back entrance to Morgan Monroe State Forest, which is what I'm taking right now. So you can see it's a little bit of a 
a backwoods boony road here, but uh, it's the quick way to get in. It saves quite a bit of time rather than going in the main uh, forest road entrance. Uh, this road, by the way, does get uh, more than a little bit rough in spots with some very large potholes. So if you come in this way, which is actually coming in from the north, take your time and just be aware that it can be a really, really rough road and uh, do some significant damage to your car if you're not paying attention and, whoa, taking it slow. This is the Forest Service headquarters for Morgan Monroe State Forest. You can see the, the Three Lakes Trail is actually about the start of it's a couple hundred yards down this road. And then you can't see it, but literally right across the street from the Forest Service headquarters is the trailhead for the Low Gap Trail and the start of the Tecumseh Trail. That's the northern terminus of the Tecumseh Trail. You ready? You ready, baby? We're parked. The dogs are happy to be out of the car. And that's lake number one of the Three Lakes Trail, Cherry Lake. The trail actually itself starts about 100 yards down there. And this is Cherry Lake, where we start and end. We are geared up and uh, ready to start hiking. Not a bad day to be hiking in central Indiana in late June, huh? There's zero humidity and it's about 68 degrees right now. Doesn't get any better than this in, in late June, summertime in Indiana. So here's the actual start of the trail. This road here goes down to a shelter, Cherry Lake shelter, and the trail starts like right there. Now here's what we find ourselves hiking in at the beginning of the trail. It's a very gradual descent on very easy trail. This is what the first half mile of the trail or so is like. Very gradual downhill down this kind of ridge and then we'll eventually get to the base of it where there's a creek. Uh, but it's a good warm up if you go clockwise. Just a good way to get your heart beating and get into it. It's actually an absolutely beautiful area. Okay, we've reached the first, this is the creek bottom area. By the way, word of warning, that bridge gets really slippery. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've almost taken a tumble on that, including right there. Here's a little creek bottom area. We're about a half mile from the starting point. Beautiful little setting. Meander along this creek bottom for about another half a mile or so. This has always been a really nice spot one of my favorite little spots on the beginning of the trail beautiful little area so this is the first climb of any significance short by mountain standards but uh, uh, pretty decent by Indiana standards just enough to get your heart beating <sighs> well we've completed the, the first decent hill got a little bit of sweaty <laughs> And when you get to the top of it, there's this little road right behind the camera is actually the forest, the paved main forest road, about 100 yards behind the camera. But this is an old cemetery. According to the various guidebooks, I think it rests almost exactly one mile into the trip. First big milestone, first big hill completed. Now we've got a long flat section before we get into, into any other significant hills a couple miles per, further on probably. Just after the cemetery, which is about maybe a few hundred yards back behind the camera, we come to another milestone. The original trail used to go this way. They piled trees like five feet tall. They wanted to really give you the message that they don't want you taking the old trail. So the reroute goes this way. So now we're heading to the other side of the road, do a whole bunch of miles, and then uh, towards about three quarters of the way point in the hike, we'll cross it again.
Well, that sign doesn't look like much, but that's the end of the reroute. The reroute section comes from here. Uh, this is what the old trail used to look like. The last two miles or so we've really been on, really since the road crossing, a kind of a flat ridge top area. Now we start a descent, which is what this is, down to another creek bottom area, and, and start the first, well, the second climb of the trip, and really the first one of any significance. This one actually goes on for about a half mile or so. Well, we're nearing the bottom of that descent. Sort of see down in the bottom there, the creek. Okay, so we've reached the creek bottom. We're getting ready to go right back up the other side up there. The other thing of significance worth mentioning about hiking in Indiana this time of year or any time of the year really after the spring, there's no water. And it's this way basically in this entire part of Indiana. All the seasonal, this would be described as a seasonal creek. They all go bone dry. Anyways, I know the dogs were probably counting on getting some water here, so we'll, uh, we'll take a little break. All right, break time is over. This is the creek bed right back there, just to give you some perspective on distance and what we're hiking in here and this starts the you know the second noted climb of the of the hike this one's considerably longer it's about a half mile long i know for all of you out in the rockies or doing a 4000 foot climb on the at that's kind of laughable but it's indiana <laughs> The climb's really got two parts to it. You can kind of see, it looks like a cliff there. That was the first part. <laughs> we just finished that, but then, this is in the category of the gift that keeps on giving. It goes up this power line corridor for about another, probably even a half mile from here. So this is the power line corridor I was talking about. You can't quite see all the way to the top of it, but we're gonna, we're actually gonna hike all the way to the end of it. You can see the grade behind me. It actually meanders across this opening a couple times goes in the woods along the my right hand side of the trail all the way up to the top and then crosses crosses it again the power line corridor on the second decent sized hill on the three lakes trail interesting little thing about the three lakes trail is as you're watching the video and counting the lakes You'll only count two. And I'd love to have some fantastic story about what happened to the third one, but I honestly don't know. So maybe I'll do a little research on that. Over here is kind of a bowl that we walked around. We came down from over there, walked down in that valley, and then came up here, up this ridge. And there's this big bowl-shaped area, which I think may be the area where the third lake was at one time. Now at the top of that power line corridor, we're just emerging from the woods there, you see to the left. That's the very top. Second little hill of the trip. That's what she looks like. Now we'll have a uh, another long, flat forest service area where they've done a lot of logging. Closing in on halfway, we probably still have another, I'm guessing at least mile and a half till we get to halfway. This is what we're hiking in now. Uh, not the most exciting thing in the world. Goes on for probably another mile, I'm guessing. Another significant landmark. We just finished the uh, forest road section. Now, we go back single track. And this really starts the downhill into the, the creek bottom area. That's actually the drainage from Bryant Creek Lake. Into the jungle. All right, we finished the descent. This is the, the creek bottom that we're in. It goes all the way to the lake. Long, flat hike now to the uh, to Bryant Creek Lake. This is what it looks like pretty much the whole way to the lake. We've reached a, a significant milestone. This, this is man-made. I don't know what the history of it is. It's almost like there was a mill here or something, some sort of a levee. It really marks the end of that long, flat stretch along the creek. 
and the lake is uh, no more than about 100 yards beyond this levee. Kind of gives you a landmark where you know you're right at the lake and just about halfway. This is a little bottom area that the lake drains off into. Not much to speak of now, but even the last time I was here, this was not an easy crossing right here. And this whole area, you can even see from all the debris, uh, gets flooded. So it can be really mucky, really messy through here. You can see kind of off in the distance a bridge, but sometimes even getting to that bridge means crossing about from here to there of uh, just flooded stuff. So this is the eastern end of Bryan Creek Lake. Boy Scout Troop 234 was building this in 2014 when I came here. <laughs> I was actually here in 2014 when they were putting it together. It used to be this gnarly little switchback thing that would get eroded that went up this cliff here. Now we head along the lake and cross the dam and the trail goes right along the other side and up there. kind of a rather interesting feature of this lake. That tree was taken down by a beaver. The way that that tree was taken down, those are actually teeth marks on both sides. It's like you think, oh, okay, that was taken down with somebody with a, a hatchet, but it's actually just been chewed down. <laughs> Gives you a pretty view, good view of the dam that will cross. This is Bryant Creek Lake. View of the lake real quick. And then where we came from. And this is Bryant Creek Lake in the middle of the dam. We hiked in on that shore over to the right and we'll hike out on that shore over to the left. Having fun. This is the Bryant Creek Shelter. The trail goes right across this open area to the other side by that picnic table. This used to be when we did the Hilly Hundred a few years back. This was always one of the sag stops, I think, on the second day. I've always remembered it. Neat little spot. There's a section of the Appalachian Trail in northern Virginia just before you get into Harper's Ferry, if you're going northbound, that they call the roller coaster. It's like a 10-mile stretch of just up, down, up, down, up, down. We are getting ready to enter uh, southern Indiana's own little version of the roller coaster. From here on all the way back to the end of the trail, there's a series of uh, three significant hills, really. So this starts the first one. The whole rest of the hike now is just nothing but up and down, so it really isn't a lot of flat stretches. There's one long flat stretch, right, basically right before we get to the end. That's what we have to look forward to, so let's get going on it. Kind of hard to tell, but it's uphill. Pretty. The steepest part of this one's done. Now it's just a gift that keeps on giving gradually uphill all the way to the top of this ridge. Steepest parts at the beginning. Of the three climbs that we're gonna have to do between here and the end, three big climbs, uh, this is probably the easiest one. For the most part, the first climb is done. One down, two to go. We've hit the second road crossing. Actually, it's the same road. And the significance of this is this really officially marks the end of the first climb we came from there. So here's where we'll be hiking in. Then we head down a pretty steep ridge line. This one's pretty steep in both directions. We go down steep, and then you go up pretty steep the other side. So this is the most severe one. We just crossed the road back there. I don't know if you get a good idea of the terrain with all the vegetation, but it's steep down there. And that's right where we're heading to the bottom. Kind of like heading down this ridge. And then at the end of it, there's this little spine on the ridge, it goes out that way. When we get to the end of it, we go down some steep, steep switchbacks all the way to the bottom. Should give you some idea of the terrain. That's what we just came down. When you get to the bottom, this is what you're in for no more than, I don't even think it's a quarter mile. And then we'll go up something that looks remarkably like what we just came down. A thing that looks remarkably like a cliff in the background is what we're going up. There's the trail. It just kind of goes up. Of the three on this back side of it, this is the hardest. So let's get going and get it done. We're through the 
steepest part of the second climb and it levels off like the first one did but it stays steeper for longer get your heart beating going a little better idea of drain it just keeps going like a, probably another half mile that doesn't look like much and it isn't but it marks the top of the second climb now we've got a kind of long flat ridge line section before we start the next downhill here's sort of what it's going to look like we're just on top of this ridge that's actually downhill oh, some flat stuff to walk for a little while we got the same arrangement we're walking down like this little finger and everywhere around us is downhill pretty steep so downhill number two starts yeah it's already started way up there but this is the steep part of it and then what's interesting is when we get to the base here again then now we've got a fairly long flat section it runs right along a creek bottom and with many crossings of it in in the springtime when the water's really going pretty good it can be a little bit of a hassle it's all going to be bone dry now now this gives you a little better idea of the train that's the trail and that's where we're going way down there kind of looks like a jungle right now down here with everything growing up come here in the winter there's nothing there's no green wide open views you know the whole way in both directions you can see the terrain you can see everything and here I feel like I'm almost like in the Amazon or something that's what it looks like on the valley floor we'll do this for probably another mile right along a stream one of the cool things about this area all these monstrous pine trees but the smell of like pine straw just such a cool area and I think this used to actually be pine plantation a lot of this whole area did well there's another one of those nondescript landmarks you would think kind of right next to the trail that sycamore tree which you can see usually a whole lot better like in the spring and winter when everything's not overgrown but it stands out like a beacon it's the only sycamore tree you really see on this entire trail and it marks one half an hour to the end this spot right here means 30 minutes to the car. That's one way to get up close to the drinking fountain. <laughs> Well, throughout this whole bottom land that you come to between the, the second downhill and the third uphill, there's a number of stream crossings, but they're usually spread apart by, by quite a distance. This and the next one are different. Two screen, stream crossings in a really short distance. The next stream crossing is only up about another 100 yards, and what's significant about that is that signifies the end of this bottom land area. And then right after that, about another 100 yards, is the turnoff that starts the beginning of the, the third and final uphill for this section. So 100 steps further, this is the next stream crossing. So when you see two of them close together like this, we just got about 100 yards further to go. We're gonna come to a big sign, uh, but you don't wanna miss it. <laughs> and that's the turnoff to the left that starts the last big hill. A couple hundred yards behind me down that trail was that last stream crossing. And this is the start of the, the last, uh, the third of the climbs that we had to go, the last big one that we've got. There's a couple little rollers after this, but this is the last one that'll really get your attention. Two stream crossings in quick succession, another couple hundred yards, you come to this guy, and then we're heading up this way. So third and final hill, let's get it going. This is what it looks like, bird's eye view. It really isn't all that steep, but it just keeps meandering up. This one just seems to go on forever. There's no switchbacks. Kind of goes back and forth straight up the hill. It just gradually just flattens out and you barely even notice it. Third and final climb is over. little field meadow is significant for a couple of reasons kind of signifies the end of that third and final climb if you didn't notice it flattening out which was only about a hundred yards back this is really the start of the home stretch the last climb is over really now we've got a, a one decent downhill and then just some ups and downs and uh, and we're at the car and as soon as you enter the woods on the other side this is what you get into and I'm not sure if you can tell but that's downhill. We're heading in that direction. Trail's over there. Kind of another significant uh, 
milestone. Safety zone basically means uh, no shooting, no loaded weapons, no hunting, anything beyond this spot. So it's definitely a sign we're reaching, getting closer to the Forest Service headquarters where we finish. Uh, hunting is permitted in the Morgan Monroe State Forest. And as you've seen from uh, some of my other videos, it can get kind of interesting out here during hunting season, which is typically you know into the fall and, and into winter. And if you're out here, especially during primetime hunting season, definitely wear some high visibility um, hunter's orange that you can strap on your pack, on your body, on your dogs, whatever, because it can get pretty uh, pretty interesting out here during hunting season. But beyond here, we should be good. This one's really conspicuous because it's red. It's the only red sign you'll come out to out here. And when I get to this sign, I know I'm 10 minutes from the car. This is the Cherry Lake Shelter, or Cherry Shelter House, as it's known. Big milestone here. We've only got about 200 yards to go before we get to the dam. The trail is, goes right up this hill, right past the back of the shelter, and then continues on in the wood for, woods for a couple more, hundred more yards, and then across the dam, and we're done. That bright area in the background is the dam. Right there, and there's a car right there. If you look closely, maybe you see the reflection. That's how close we are. We made it back to the car which is always a great feeling, even if it's just after you finish up a day hike. There you have it, Three Lakes Trail. Pretty detailed look. Been wanting to make a video of the Three Lakes Trail forever, and I hope you find that helpful. It's a beautiful trail. Come and enjoy it. It's a great hike.